Nairobi is a city of storytellers in a country of contradictions. A place where the modern skyscrapers that frame Kenya's economic advancement brush up against ancient traditions. Maasai people herd their cattle through the streets of the capital. And within the city limits, wild beasts wander the National Safari Park. This global tourist attraction, critical to Kenya's economy and reputation, serves up another paradox. Wide open plains, right next door to the biggest and most notorious slum in all of Africa. These are the stories most commonly told. But there's one from inside the nation's news outlets still fighting to be heard. Endemic sexual violence and harassment against women in the media. So you're trying to change a patriarchal society. Mm -hmm. Very true. We are really trying our best, though we are facing opposition, but we are not about to relent. We will keep fighting. Lillian Museka with the African Women in Media Association in partnership with Canadian media development organization Journalists for Human Rights, supported by Global Affairs Canada, helped develop a groundbreaking policy to address the issue and force newsroom bosses to act on it. We are telling them what you are doing is illegal, number one. Number two, we are telling them that the impact you are having uh, you are causing is that many women are exiting the media spaces. Many of them are sinking into mental uh, issues, they are sinking into depression, and we have had two cases of women uh, committing suicide because of that. Uh, and at the end of the day, what we are telling them, do you want to have a media house that is only for men? You want me to take you to school in the morning? And then I wait for you. Former TV journalist Rachel Ambaka now works from home for an online publication. Her television dream job, destroyed by extreme sexual advances and lewd text messages from her boss. So that moment when I froze, that moment when it happened to me, um, the feeling, aside from um, fear, disgust and confusion, was anger. I was angry, not just at myself, but at this person. Ambaka tried to tell HR what she and her female colleagues were confronting. A lot of us women here are uncomfortable, you know. The men sit too close to us, and, you know, men sometimes sit with their legs apart. So some men will make sure they're touching you and brushing against you. So I would say, this makes us uncomfortable. Please, can you stop? Um, some other people would say, when they go to cover a story outside, um, they're asked for sexual favors outright, you know, or they go to see a boss to pitch a story and they need funding, you know, they need permission to go, you know, and the boss is like, uh, so you need funding. Uh, so you know you're going to have to do, yes, you're going to meet me today at the hotel, yes. This is one of the biggest triggers of women leaving the newsroom, of women being silenced. Oh, she used to be such a loud, you know, confident girl. What happened to her? We know. We know what happened to her. And who's losing out? The organization is losing out. Kenya has about 200 media organizations. The public broadcaster is one of the only ones with a woman in charge. Yeah. It's, it's a slow process. It's though. a slow process. but it From her rare fast. position of power, Rachel Nakitari is trying to transform a culture from the inside. The policy that we came up with was simplified for us by JHR. The JHR took the gender mainstreaming committee team through training and sensitization on how to go about um, using it in implementation. And that has been very good because we have actually done it. I can tell you for sure we've prosecuted two cases using being guided by that policy and it has worked very well. So far, only a handful of news outlets have adopted the sexual harassment policy, and it's only through increased safety for women in media, according to JHR human rights expert Winnie Sayambua, that other women will be encouraged to speak up. Um, we've got women who are um, serious leaders who can comment on topical issues because most of the time we reach out to men as um, the commentators to whatever issues we want to talk about, especially headline issues. It's not complicated. Male-dominated newsrooms mean male-dominated news cycles, leaving women's issues in the dust and 
In a country where the majority of poor and unpaid are women, there are a lot of untold stories that one policy can unleash. Lisa Laflamme, Kenya. <laughs>